Well, as you learned in our previous video on Francesco Redi and spontaneous generation, spontaneous generation is the belief that living things come from non-living things. And Francisco Redi uh, proposed that living things only come from living things and, and had a very famous experiment with the flies in the meat. Um, but though this um, theory, spontaneous generation, states that, you know, providing the right conditions, life can just create itself, um, almost two years later, another scientist came along and said, you know, uh-uh, um, Fran Francisco Reddy was on the right path, and I just need to go a little bit further to, to prove this and to prove that microbes do not just arise out of thin air, that they do, in fact, arise from other microbes. So he set up a very famous experiment involving, involving curved flasks, um, and you, as you can see in this picture. Um, so he, what he did was he set up these swan-necked flasks that contained um, a sterile broth, and he sterilized it um, by boiling the, the contents to remove microorganisms in the broth and killing the proteins. And he sterilized it, and as he boiled it, um, it killed all the microbes in the tube by ex you know, expelling hot air out of it. Um, so he realized that the swan neck uh, flasks would be very val valuable because microorganisms couldn't really get in. Um, so I'll put X for microorganisms. They could only get as far as, you know, perhaps the first curve, maybe about here. And so as dust would kind of enter and settle down right at this base of the curve, um, they wouldn't really actually be able to crawl all the way all the way inside because they don't have a curved path um, and so this um, this broth would only become an incubator for microorganisms if they were thus able to get all the way in so he designed an experiment number one over here you know had an open flask where microorganisms could cr crawl in thus uh, resulting in a, a cloudy broth bro broth, I should say, um, you know, where microorganisms would multiply and multiply, creating this cloudy mixture. Um, and um, he had, a, you know, a, a, another flask where, you know, it was just, it was just um, the broth and the flask itself not exposed to microorganisms. And this did not produce a cloudy mixture. And a third, where the flask was open, but he tilted it. And when he tilted it, it allowed this dusty mixture of microorganisms that rested and settled at the bottom to go then thus into the broth. He tilted it back, and there was indeed a cloudy mixture. So Pasteur's results soon became translated by other scientists as the theory of biogenesis, and if we break that word down, um, the, the development of bio, of life. Okay, that living things, or another definition of biogenesis, that living things could only arise from other living things. Very important. In essence, um, Pester won the intellectual battle once and for all. Star him, yay. And he continued his work on airborne microorganisms by also helping pr to produce um, vaccines uh, for cholera, anthrax, and rabies. Um, and, he, you know, he took a short but significant bite out of this grand history in microbiology.